Hi folks, Jason Webster here. Welcome to this episode of Inside PTI. Hey, today we're in the field. Wanted to give you an inside look at some of the work we're doing with strip till and fertility. And today we're doing some liquid versus dry fertilizer strip till studies. You can see the tractor behind me. We've got, this is actually our liquid strip till bar. This is a, uh, um, a six row strip till bar that we've set up from Black Eagle Equipment. And this is how we're doing, you know, placing some of our liquid fertilizer in the strip. We're then comparing it to our dry fertilizer rig um, to put dry fertilizer in strips just to compare, okay, keeping the tillage the same, but comparing a liquid program in strips in the fall versus a typical status quo dry program with DAP and potash. All right, so we've got our strip till rig in the shop right now. This is the strip till bar we've been using to make our liquid applications in fall strip tilling. This is a new strip till bar for us. It's a, it's a strip till bar from Black Eagle Ag Solutions. Uh, it's been a great partner to work with so far. We brought this rig in. It's a different design uh, of, of a strip till rig than what we've been using. Uh, you'll see we do have hydraulic cylinders on the row units here as well as, as springs. We are running a shank type. Uh, there's no coulters on this. This is a shank type. We, we generally like to go uh, depths of 8 to 10 inches deep uh, to lift and fracture compaction in the field. Um, probably not a spring uh, strip till unit just because of the shank type uh, system. I can't, I'm usually not dry enough in the spring, so this is typically a fall machine for us. Uh, I got large residue managers up on the front. We, we are running those with air cylinders so we can control the aggressiveness of those residue managers in the front and then we've got different design of of our wheels uh, back here uh, in our t-handle so we can kind of control all the way around here as far as the liquid goes on this particular unit we are running uh, precision planning's pump stack our hydraulically driven pump and then we're we're using our rate controller uh, through the 2020 in the cab of the tractor coming through our vapply hds here for our control of our rate of uh, liquid fertilizer. So all in all, I think this thing worked pretty good. Um, we we're excited about getting this thing in. It, it came in late, a limited limited basis that we were able to run this thing this this past fall. But all in all, we were pretty impressed with the way this 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 strip till rig was running in the field here at the PTI farm. All right, you're probably wondering what type of liquid fertilizer were we running in this particular machine. So as we thought of phosphorus, we thought, well, let's use 1034-0. It's, it's widely available across the world and everybody knows it. So let's use some 1034-0. In some of our more generic applications, we still needed a potassium source though. And so we teamed up with Nature's. I, I called our friends at Nature's and I said, hey guys, I'm, I'm gonna be looking at liquid fertilizer in fall strips. What could we use as a replacement for dry dap and potash? And so our potassium replacement was K-Flex. It's an 0019 with a six on the sulfur side. And so that, that matched up pretty nicely. And then once we got rid of the 1034-0, we shifted in a nature's throwback program and it's a 9274 uh, with some sulfur on it as well. So we were running that combination in the field. We'll see what what, what happens when we take this thing to yield in 2023. But all in all, I felt really confident about how we made our strips. I thought they worked well in the liquid application. It worked very well um, additionally. So today's Inside PTI Agronomy Tip of the Day is, we are looking at dry fertilizer versus liquid fertilizer applications in the fall in our strip till. And one of the, the concerns I guess I have right now with the program is simply cost. You know, it's bad enough that we've got DAP and potash at historically high prices and um, haven't seen price, high prices like this in a long time. But when you compare it to the liquid, the cost goes up even more. So we're going to do some different rates, try to look at some different efficiencies and really dial in and see how liquid matches up to some of our typical dry applications that we've been used to. The other thing I want to look at too is, I don't know that a liquid fertilizer can do, a, can do any type of, of job for me in building a soil test level. Say we're low in phosphorus or potassium, can I put a liquid on and help drive those numbers up? I don't think so. So that's the thing we're going to have to you know, kind of look at the long term analysis of this, not only just do it in one fall, we're going to have to do it multiple years. So it's one of the nice things we, we've started to do here at PTI is long term testing. We've got three year studies, we've got five year studies. And we've even got some 10-year studies here at the farm. So we're trying to be patient, 
looking for consistency, looking at repeatability. Well, that's all the time we have for today's episode of Inside PTI. If you got any questions about anything that we've talked about today, shoot me an email at InsidePTI at PrecisionPlanning.com or stop by and visit your local Precision Planning Premier dealer and have a conversation. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We will see you on the next episode of Inside PTI. Thanks for watching.